Hello everyone, once again this is Lee from Monmouthshire Paranormal with a short video in response once more to a post in the forum on Steve Huff's website, huffparanormal.com. Now, Sean's has asked for some advice in operating um, NCH WavePad sound editing software. Um, it's a relatively simple piece of software if you're familiar with other kinds, if you're not, then it can be a bit of a confusing mess. So what I've done, I've put together a very short video, I say very short, it's about 15 minutes. Um, if you want to sit through it and take a look, I'll show you how to isolate uh, sections of a file, how to reduce the noise in that file, to try and bring out the EVP a bit. And towards the end then, there's also a small bit showing you how that when you've cleaned your file up, you can actually time increase it so you can stretch it out you can slow it down even you can use in the same process but in opposite you can speed it up anyway hope you enjoyed the video we'll catch you all soon Good afternoon everybody this is Lee once again from Monmouthshire Paranormal and this short video is in response to a post that Sean's made on Half Paranormal's forum concerning WavePad Sound Editor. Now, oh, it's very similar to Audacity and uh, Audio Genie in a lot of ways, but it does have a few little tricks, bells and whistles that the others don't. However, if you're going to be using WavePad, what you're going to need to do at first is obviously import a file. And you do that by obviously going to File, Open File, and then you locate the folder and file you require. Now for this, I'm going to use my little friend, Hermione. Now this is an audio recording that I made in a 16th century manor house that I work in, um, in South Wales. The name of the manor house is Llankaiachvaur in the Welsh, which actually means um, the important house next to the water field in very old Welsh, but you can hear from this recording that there's quite a bad signal to noise ratio, quite a lot of hiss, the audio is quite quiet. That's because it was recorded on a very cheap digital recorder that I had off eBay for about £8 I think. Now for the purposes of brevity, I happen to know that the EVP that I require is somewhere in this section here. So when you've identified the EVP that you want to analyze, what you're going to need to do is put your cursor at the beginning of the section. You left click and hold. As you can see, that's brought out a red indicator bar. And then you just drag your mouse across to the point where you think you have sufficient audio. And click, and then you right click and copy. Now come up here, you'll notice that there's two crosses. This one on the red background, don't touch that, as that will shut down the entire program. Just click on this one. There you go. Now that has sent your original recording back to whatever folder it lives in, which means that whatever you do to the copied sample will not affect your original recording. Particularly handy if, like me, as a researcher, you submit your EVPs for peer review, and some of those peers being exceptionally skeptical, they won't accept anything that has been sound manipulated. They see that as evidence of manipulation, and they don't like that because they think that we're all cheating. So what you're going to need to do, now you copy that small sample from your audio file, is open file, new file, and then you simply right click and paste. There we have our section of audio. Now, I'll play it. If you have headphones on, you might hear the EVP I'm speaking of. If not, there's a good chance you won't. But it'll give you a good idea of the original quality of the file we're working with. Now, you may or may not have heard something. So what we're going to need to do first is to amplify the audio. Easily done. 
come here to your taskbar, effects, and then amplify. Now, when you click amplify, left click, you can, you have a range of options. You can either come here to the presets, whether you can have it quarter volume, half, double volume, or triple volume. I personally have it default set to 400% gain, which is the maximum that it will allow you to set as a default. Um, I know that down here I've got 800 put in, but when you apply that, it doesn't apply 800, only 400. So anyway, you can uh, preview it in this bar here, but being as we're working with a piece of extracted file and our original file is already safely tucked away, then there's no need to worry about corrupting it, so just apply. Now, I'll play it again, so you can see the increase in volume. Now, you might have heard that our little EVP, that I believe, says Hermione is in this section here. So what we want to do is clean up this section, get rid of some of the background noise. There's a couple of ways you can do this, but the most popular way in WavePad is to use this, the spectral subtraction. Now, in order to use this spectral subtraction, you're going to have to identify a part of your file that has no um, sound of interest. So, a bit of, a bit of dead static background noise. So, if I just play play this bit for you. You can see there's nothing in there of any interest. So that is the piece that we will use as our control. So what you need to do is, again, you left click, and that will bring in your red indicator, and just choose a small section, probably about mm, a second, no more than a second, that tends to remove too much information. And once you've highlighted that piece, come to clean up, noise reduction, and then grab a noise sample from selected area. What that has done now is it's made a note of every single audio frequency contained in that highlighted section. Now you want to remove those frequencies from the whole section of audio, so you right click, select all, come back to clean up, noise reduction, and spectral subtraction based on noise sample. Now, when I click this, you will notice a marked reduction in the bandwidth of the audio. There you go. That's reduced it considerably. Now, if I play this, it will be very quiet. As you can see. Great if you've got headphones on, but if you haven't, all you need to do is amplify once more. And then you have... So... We'll extract Hermione out of a little hiding place. So remember we did that. You click at the beginning, brings in the indicator rod. You left click and hold. Isolate the section you want. Right click. And then copy. Get rid of that. No need to save it because your original file is already tucked away in its folder. Come to file. Left click. New file. Right click paste. And there is the mining. Now there's extra bits we can do for this. Again, I, uh, this is only my personal preference, but I don't like to sound manipulate them. If I submit them for review, the maximum that I will ever do to them is amplify. But if this is for your own research, and you couldn't give a hoop what the skeptics think, because there is no honour and certainly no profit and no point in faking EVPs, you're probably going to want to take a bit more of this background noise out. We're probably going to get drowned out by a military helicopter in a moment because being in the Bracken Beacons National Park, we are right on the flight route to Sandy Bridge. You probably heard a Chinook thudding away out there. Um, anyway, if you want to remove a little bit more of the background static, if you come here to clean up, noise reduction again, but this time come to multiband noise gating. Now if you left click on that, you'll see, get a small noise reduction box come up. 
in your presets, you get this. Remove, hum and hiss. Now remove, hum and hiss is the default setting. This Because if I click it, it takes it to minus 20 dB. You have the choice of altering that. Um, I prefer to keep it exactly where it is. I find that it does precisely what it says in the tin. 20 dB. When I click that, keep your eye on the file, you notice a very small alteration in its waveform. There you go. Now that's removed all the hiss. But if you play that, you don't get much. So amplify. Again, 400%. I'll amplify it again this time. And now, our audio will have a strange warbling quality to it. All that is, is because of the various frequencies that have been removed from the audio file and the automatic algorithms that have reduced the hiss and the hum, then it does remove so much from the file that the computer program is left looking for bits. So you tend to get a slight warble, but you will have a much cleaner audio. So you now you can hear Hermione quite clearly. Now, I don't particularly need that so for our purposes now we're going to time alter this section of audio and we know that Hermione is in this bit here so what I'll do I'll click on there I'll right click select to start notice that highlights that bit and then I can right click and delete and then we know that she ends about there, so I can again right click, select to end, and right click, delete. Now when I play this, it's in the original recorded real time. So Sean's wanted to elongate the time frame slightly, so what you need to do is come up here to speed, and speed change. Now you can change the pitch, that's usually more for um, for music recording. You know, if a singer's hit the wrong note, if the bass player has hit a bum note, then you can pitch adjust it and alter it. But for us, no need to look at pitch, just look at change speed. Now, that, as you can see, has selected the entire audio file, and that audio file is 3.324 seconds long. So let's say we wanted to make it four seconds long. Just enter four. There you go. Apply. And you'll see an alteration to the waveform. Now when we play it, If you think that's been stretched a bit too much for your own liking, then you can always come back up here to the arrow and that reverses the various stages that you've done. So now we click that once, we're back to back to our original time frame. So you can come into speed again, change speed, shall we say 4.5. Now, there are also other little tricks you could do. Let's just uh, bring that back to where you want it. There you go. Imagine you wanted uh, to reverse it. Lots of people now uh, getting into the thing about, you know, you hear EVP and then you decipher what that EVP says, then you reverse the audio and you pick out something else. Um, I've only ever come across one example of that in recordings I've made, so I'm, um, I reserve judgment on it, but other people have done work on it and there does seem to be some kind of validation in their work. But if you want to reverse this entire piece of audio, all you need to do is right click select all and reverse and then what you end up with is this
reversed audio. Um, I think that's just about it. We don't need to save that. What we can do is, uh, hey there everybody, how are you doing today? Now if we play that. Hey there everybody, how are you doing today? See if we can reverse that. Yeah, this new is you want here, I'll give it a hear Put that back where we need it. Um, speed change. There we go. Let's make that 22. Takes a little while for the processor, and I mean, this is quite a fast processor in this computer. It's an A3 core, it's not a quad core, but. And then we've got. Okay, that was embarrassing. Makes me sound like I did in my uh, party days. But there we go. Anyway, I hope this is uh, this short tutorial. I say short, it was considerably longer than I thought it was going to be. But I hope this tutorial has been of some value to you. And, uh, well, please take note and comment if you so wish. Bye bye for now.